In the days since the New York Times revealed an elaborate Defense Department program aimed at using retired officers to carry the Bush administration's message on television and question the financial ties between some analysts and military contractors. Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro has demanded answers in a letter to network executives. Now, most of the analysts tended to support the Pentagon even as the Iraq conflict turned bloodier and more intractable. Here's CNN's Don Shepard in 2006. In my opinion, we're following the right strategy, which is get the Iraqi security forces up to speed and let them fight the war as we slowly withdraw. Shepard told me this week that while he consulted with Pentagon officials, he has always been independent. I feel no pressure whatsoever uh, to do anything other than prevent my honest opinions about what's going on. I certainly did not feel compelled to carry any message to anybody. In our talkback segment this morning, a chance to hear the other side. I spoke earlier with Lawrence Dorita, the former Pentagon spokesman under Secretary Don Rumsfeld, and retired Colonel Ken Allard, a former military analyst for NBC and author of the book Warheads, Cable News, and the Fog of War. Ken Allard, you were one of the analysts who got high-level briefings at the Pentagon after the Iraq War. Looking back, do you feel that you got candid assessments on how the war was going? Not as candid as I would have liked them. It very much reflected the Pentagon point of view, but I, did, I expected that. So I took that with a grain of salt as it was intended. You told the New York Times that you got hosed. What do you mean by that? Well, I really felt that we got an interesting series of pitches. Uh, in some ways, almost nonstop. Because when you walked into Donald Rumsfeld's Pentagon, when you sat around this conference table, you got a lot of briefings. Very high level, uh, PowerPoint rich environments. We got an awful lot of that stuff, which later turned out to be, on sober reflection, not to be always the truth. So you, you feel that you were used? Did you use any of that information that you, that you now believe uh, was not entirely accurate? I took every bit of that information, evaluated that against my own sense of what was going on and my other sources, made up my mind about what was going on, conveyed that judgment on the air. All right, Dorita, were you, the Pentagon, Don Rumsfeld, trying to get a positive message out through these TV analysts, these retired military men, who appeared to the viewer at home to be independent? Um, a positive, no. I think our objective was was uh, a balance, a richer uh, set of understandings. That we, there was a general sense, and I think the public often it was showed up in polls that they weren't getting the breadth of the story that was you, going. You on. weren't telling them how badly the war was going. They, listen, we tried to be very candid, and they, when they came in, they saw. Uh, Mil very senior military officers. Nobody tells a senior military officer how to talk to other military officers. Uh, most of them retired. We'd have the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. We'd have the director of operations. Th these were not guys that were going to come in and, and we'd, we'd hand them a bunch of political talking points. They, they told it like it was. They tried to be very unvarnished, but they certainly provided aspects of the story that was not being reported upon. Well, hold on. You, you, you told the New York Times that you were trying to counter the increasingly negative view of the war provided by journalists. Correct. Absolutely. How do you counter a negative view of the war with a positive view of the war? No, with complete information and then let people make their own judgments. And that's what we were certainly trying to do. There, uh, the, I think there was a generally negative uh, intonation to most of the media coverage after about uh, late 2003. Uh, I think the public uh, was receiving mostly sort of what's going wrong with Iraq. We wanted to just provide some additional information. Isn't what's going right? There a consensus now. There, there were a lot of things going wrong in Iraq mm -hmm. in 2004, 2005, 2006, when 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 the Pentagon and Don Rumsfeld were blaming the media for being excessively negative. Things were not going well with that war. Well, but there were a lot of things going right too. There was uh, g uh, several elections that took place. There was government being stood up. There were people stepping forward to sign up for the Iraqi security forces, and that was not as being widely reported upon as, you know, the explosions every day. And so we were trying to provide some of that context. You went to Iraq, Colonel, in a 2005 trip arranged by the Pentagon. Uh, did you feel you were on that trip um, um, getting an unvarnished view of the war? Or did, it, did it influence your commentary in a more positive light? Uh, the commentary I gave NBC later on was limited to a total of three hits the weekend I came back. That was it. It was very, very tough for us to even get on TV with what we had to say, good or bad. What I Why was that? Let's stop you right Simply there. because they went south on the war. And basically, their coverage reflected the fact people were getting bored with this. This is as early as 2005. 2004. 2004. Look back at the election in 2004, what was not discussed. Things like manpower. Things like, was the war a good idea? Should we continue to fight? If so, for how long? Things which we're talking about now were not even talked about back then. We couldn't even get on. We couldn't get on on a bet. It wasn't the content of what you were saying, it was a lack of interest, which we're seeing today. I mean, every, every survey shows the amount of time devoted to this war has gone way down. Every single analyst felt the same thing. 
whether they work for NBC, CNN, or Fox. We simply were not getting on to talk about our story, good or bad. Let me add to that just a little bit, too. During that same period, we were also encouraging news organizations to keep reporters uh, in embedded. the theater and certainly embedded so that they'd get a lot, a lot broader perspective than what they were getting, for the most part, receiving briefings in Baghdad. So it wasn't just analysts and third parties. We were also trying to get news organizations to, to do the same thing. What these internal documents show is that this was a fairly sophisticated program. You, uh, Thank you. You, 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 sent over, <laughs> you sent over talking points. You tracked the appearances of analysts on different <clears throat> news channels and networks. Um, Fox's analyst, uh, John Garrett, told me he always spoke his mind, but there was an email where he sent the Pentagon where he said, please let me know if you have any specific points you want covered or that you would prefer to downplay. Sounds like uh, you were kind of manipulating these folks. No, I, certainly what we were trying to do, my colleague here is nodding vigorously, we, we wanted to present aspects of this coverage that was not being presented elsewhere and this was a group of people who were naturally more likely to understand some of these aspects the military uh, uh, operations that were taking place the, the kinds of things that were occurring on the ground it wasn't so much our interest in these people that mattered it was the news organization's interest they were hired by news organizations and that made them interesting to us by definition and to be fair the pentagon did not groom the warheads the warheads were created by the networks not the pentagon now that said did they have their point of view? Yes, they did. Did we have among the warheads guys who were true believers? Yes, we did. But we also had Barry McCaffrey, Wes Clark, a number of us, including myself, who said, you know what, Mr. Rumsfeld, the troop situation here is bad. We're light on the ground, and that's going to hurt us. And over time, we were proven right. Over time, How early had... did you say that? When you look back at the run-up to the Iraq war, do you I wish would... you had been more skeptical? Uh, I would remind you of how Vice President Cheney himself talked as the invasion was proceeding. He said, well, we have military officers embedded in TV studios. That was directly meant as a slam at all of us. So don't, you know, please he tell thought me. you, the vice president thought you were on the team. Did you ever feel like you were on the team? I felt I was representing NBC News and myself. That was it. I was not paid to represent the administration. I was paid to say what I thought, not what they thought. All right. Um, part of the controversy uh, stemming from this particular article has to do with uh, military analysts, former military officers, uh, who also either worked for defense contractors or were seeking military contracts themselves, thereby commenting on the very institution that they also hope to get some funding from. You uh, involved in that field? Never once. Ever. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm poor but honest, let's put it that way. Uh, and none of the guys apparently who were in the room with me ever thought to offer me a job. If they had, I probably would have taken it, but they didn't. Do you think it was a conflict of interest for some of your fellow former uh, officers to be I in that kind of business? I absolutely do, because the reason why you're there is to offer the public, uh, for whatever the reason you have, however good you are, whatever your opinion matters, it is an honest opinion. You offer that without any hope of remuneration, without any hope of reward. That's basically the reward you're getting is what CNN, Fox, or NBC News pays you to be there. That's it. Fox uh, analyst Tim Eads was quoted as saying that when he talked about the war or terrorism on television, he held his tongue for fear that, quote, some four-star could call up and say, kill that contract. He was involved in military contracting. Um, was that an uh, uh, unspoken threat? I don't think so. I also don't think it's at all fair to most of these analysts, who se several of whom were retired three- and four-star officers. These are people who were, in many cases, confirmed by the United States Senate, appointed mm -hmm. by the president, who certainly understand where the lines are when it comes to individual ethics. And I think to j broadly characterize this as a class of people who were trying to do this out of self-interest is enormously unfair to people who were believed in what they were doing. And, and you know, we often brought in former secretaries of state for the secretary and other leaders to talk with, former secretaries of defense. Uh, important uh, retired uh, diplomats and general officers on other bases. We didn't check what boards they sat on. We brought them in because they were important, influential people who deserved sort of some additional information. I talked to retired Colonel Bill Cowan, who was a Fox military analyst. He said that three years ago, after he criticized the war effort on the O'Reilly factor, he was booted off the group, was never invited to another briefing, never got another telephone call, never got another email. So it sounds like access was provided to those who weren't too critical. I, I don't know anything. I heard, I saw that in the story. I've heard other assertions to that effect. I, I, it's not, it was certainly not the intent. Let me tell you something. Every day, people came into that building to tell us that what we were doing was all wrong. And, and it's not, I mean, from the, we had lots of these groups. We brought educators and we brought clergy and we brought, I can't even remember the, bright, the breadth of groups that came in. Some were very supportive. Some were extremely hostile to what we were doing. But it was still seen as important to provide the information. So for people to say, 
Well, I came out and I said something wrong and they cut me off. I don't have any evidence of that. I would challenge the his own recollections on it, but I, well, I mean, if he wants to believe that, that's his... Cowan that's told his me he day. recalled it quite vividly. Uh, Colonel Allen, we've got a few seconds left. Last year, you quit NBC and MSNBC after a 10-year relationship. You indicated you thought they were moving to the left. I thought they really had moved very strongly to the left, and I also thought that uh, when they had the chance to clarify the fact that they were not moving to the left, they didn't do so. How did that affect your role as an analyst? Uh, well, number one, I was not getting on. Uh, and again, that had been a long-standing you know, trend. And I simply saw the handwriting on the wall and said, you know what? They're going one way, I'm going the other. The guys, thank you very much. God bless you. I wish you well. All right. Colonel Allard, Larry DeRita, thanks very much for joining thank you. us. Thank you. And late Friday.